What's up YouTube? Alright, so how about another Fuse video? So I have two members from the Facebook DIY Powerwall page. They both sent me some Fuse wire for me to test. One of them is Michael Leatherwood and the other one is David, uh, I'm gonna murder your last name. P-E-S-C-E. -E. David Pes Pesci. Pe Pesci? Uh, you know I me, mean, I'm terrible at names. So, we have two different fuse wires we're going to test today, and I will do, of course, one at a time so I do not get, so I don't get them mixed up, basically. I'm actually going to test it two different ways on my fuse tester thingy because I've been thinking about how I have been testing them, and the way I've been testing them in the past is the fuse is after the load, and typically in a normal application, the fuse is before the load. So, I'm going to do it both both ways and we'll see if there's a difference and maybe I've been doing it wrong the entire time all right so let's get to it all right the first measurement will be Michael Leatherwoods so let me open this guy up here oh and it's a hundred dollar check just kidding so Michael sent two different wires one is a positive and one is the negative the positive is definitely a lot thinner than the negative which is good and it looks to be from some other type of wire that he is basically recovering the wire from other wire so we'll get these tested and see what we got so the positive fuse wire, which you can barely see down here, it is on there. It is 0 0.07 millimeters. And if you want the inches, it is three thousandths of an inch. And for the negative side, he's got 0.25 millimeters. And for inches, it is ten thousandths of an inch. All right, I will get both of these soldered up over here on some little bus bars and we'll get to testing. All right, to start this off, on the left side we have the positive fuse wire. On the right we have the negative wire. And for the bus bars we will be using 12 gauge twisted pair. All right, so if nobody has seen any of the previous fuse testing videos, I'll do a quick explanation of what I'm doing here and then we'll get right to the test. So on here, on the left side, I'm using a computer power supply and I'll start off by using the orange wires which is the 3.3 volt rail. I will be going through a shunt which will give me the amps being used to pop the fuse basically and then I also have a voltmeter which will tell us how many volts are being put through the fuse. I will also hook up during the test a multimeter on both sides of the fuses so we can see the voltage drop across that particular fuse. For the load here on the right this wire is actually from a blow dryer and all I do is come from the shunt straight over to the wire and then on the other end which I will be using a nail just because it's easier to hold on to I usually start at one end down here at the bottom and I just drag it back and forth until the fuse pops and that's how I figure out how many amps it takes on the meter. So sometimes it does get a little jumpy whenever I come to one of the, the corners here. If I can't make a smooth transaction, I usually, it, you'll see the meter drop a little bit and then it'll come right back up. That's just from me switching from the different angle here and going to the next angle. I try to make it as smooth as I can, but it doesn't always work like that. So from this load here, it transfers through the nail and through the wire into the fuse. All right, this first test is on the three volt rail and we have a 10 millimeter gap and also for this test I'm not going to do the voltage drop we're just going to find out where the fuse will pop and then the second test will be the voltage drop across the fuse. Corn tech. All right, this next test is pretty much the exact same. We're using the three volt rail. The only thing different is I added these two extra alligator clips and this will give us the millivolt drop across this cell. And that's about as close as I can get it. And this gap is again, 10 millimeters. 
All right, so I will start at the bottom again and work my way up until it pops, and we'll see what we got. Corn tech. So I can only watch so many things at once, and this time I saw it popped at seven amps. Of course, I did not get to see the millivolt drop. All right, this next test will be on the three volt rail. What I did different this time is a five millimeter gap. Corn tech. All right, this next test will be on the three volt rail and the wire that is in there is what he would be using on the negative side. Car tech. Okay, so what we learned there is it does take roughly a little over 30 amps. And again, this is on the three volt rail and this is the negative side wire. This right here is a dead short and that's what I did after I was tapping it up here. It wasn't popping, so I just put it right to a dead short and you could see the meter peg out and the wire did pop. And that is okay, that's just fine. That's exactly what you want for a negative side because if something does happen, you do want it to fail if it can. All right, for the next couple of tests, this is how I was going to rewire it. Before, I was going through the shunt and then directly over to the resistance load, and then after the load, I would go to the fuse to find out where it pops. Well, this time, I've gone from the shunt directly to the fuse, and then from the fuse, I'll go to the load just like a real application would be, and we'll find out if that is any different. All right, next test is a 10 millimeter gap, and and this is the positive end fuse wire. We'll definitely be measuring the voltage drop across the fuse and we'll be using the three volt rail. Corn tech. All right, next test is the exact same as before. We're just extremely close. We're on the three volt rail, and this is a 10 millimeter gap. Car tech. All right, next test is on the three volt rail and the gap is set to five millimeters. Corn tech. All right, I believe that popped just at 10 amps. All right, next test is the exact same as the last one. It's the three volt rail and a five millimeter gap. And this one is just for consistency. And I'm gonna start a little bit higher. Corn tech. Uh, 
I do believe that was 10 amps again. Let's see where the wire's at. Okay. All right, the next round of test will be David's. Let me cut her open here and see what we got. Alrighty, he actually left some notes in here and he was able to pronounce his name for me. It's Pesh. And he also has tested this wire on his own power supply. And it's 36 AUG tin copper wire. And for a 10 millimeter gap, he has, let me move the wire out of the way. He is getting 6.5 amps, seven millimeter gap, 8.2 and five millimeter, 10 amps. So I will measure it with my measurer. And for you millimeter folks, it is 0.12 millimeters. And if you wanted it in inches, it is five thousandths. All right, and David's test will be the exact same. We are using the 12 gauge twisted pair. All right, first test is on the three volt rail and it is set to a 10 millimeter gap. Of course, I have the multimeter off to the side that will measure the millivolt drop as we go along. Come on, tuck. All right, next test is the exact same setup. Three volt rail, 10 millimeter gap, and I'm gonna start a little bit higher. Corn tech. That to me looked to be about seven and three quarter amps. All right, next test is on the three volt rail, and all we did different is change the gap to seven millimeters. Corn tech. All right, next test is the exact same as the previous one. It's on the three volt rail and seven millimeter gap. And this one is for consistency. And I am going to start just a little bit higher. Come on, tech. All right, that one went just a hair past 10. All right, next test is on the three volt rail and we just made the gap to five millimeters. Come on, tech. Next test is the exact same as the last one. It's on the three volt rail and we have a five millimeter gap. This time I'm just gonna start a little bit higher. Corn tuck. And I believe that one popped right at 11 amps. All right, next test is just an extremely close view because I want to. It's a three volt rail, five millimeter gap, and we're gonna start at a higher amp and we're just gonna watch it burn. Corn tech.
All right, Michael and David, I hope those tests were to your satisfaction. I thought it went pretty well, and it doesn't look like there was much of a difference from swapping basically where the fuse is at in the, the line of the wires. So before or after the load, it seemed like it was about the same. So all the tests I did in the past were all still valid, which is good because I don't really want to redo all the fuse tests, but, 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 I was thinking about doing a test video of all the fuses that I have done in the past, all in one video, so nobody has to go searching through like 12 different fuse test videos. I can do them all in one video, and I'll try to make it a little quicker or short, sweet, to the point type of thing. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I do something like that, or do you guys just wanna look through all the past videos and do that, because I'm fine with either way. All right, so I will, what am I gonna do? I'll see you on the next one. There's something on there again? I think there is, damn it. Or whatever, Uh, like, pes Pesci, Pesci, and I have two different fuse wires we're gonna test today, so I will get a text message. So there's two people from, ugh, would you stop texting me? I can't do this when people text. Uh, and uh, the met the and and bleh, um the and and a and I come from the shrunt the shrunt I keep calling it a shrunt. So from this the wi the 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 wires transfer the so for, bleh, and 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 the all right so let's see and then out the and then through the ugh ah oh, come on dude go on tech. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah, he, and, and, and free. Alrighty. The two per 12 gauge, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And we are, uh, and, um, Kaworn Tech. Oh, I gotta plug it in. And I think my alligator clip was touching. Redo. Uh, Michael and David, is that right? Don't want to mess up the names too much.